Hey there friends, Martin here and I'm back. After finishing Heroes of Bronze, I took a little bit of time off from creating new tutorials. Well, that's not strictly speaking true. I've been creating a lot of content for my Patreon and also I've been working on a new course for CG Boost. I will unveil that in time, but for now I wanted to kick off producing tutorials for this channel again. So here goes, seven more tips for improving your Blender workflows. Tip number one, shape keys can actually go above and below the value you created it with. Well, what does it mean? Let's say I have this helmet and I want to change its shape. So let's create this shape key basis to store the default shape of the object and then add a new shape key with this plus button. Next up, roll the value all the way to one and now you can go to edit mode and start editing your mesh. Make a change to it something like this using the proportional editing activated with O. And congrats, you've just created a shape key. Now, anytime you want to return to the default shape, you just roll this down to zero. So far so good. However, let's now have a look at this maximum and minimum value down here. Because you don't have to rely on just one and zero values here. Instead, you can, for example, make the max value two. And now, See, Blender just computed this higher value for you, basically extrapolating on the shape change, making it double in intensity. And you can also make the minimal value to, let's say, negative one, or even less. And now the shape change gets inverted. This is especially useful for character expressions using shape keys. And with this, you can make them more intense than the shape key you originally created but it has more uses, for example, for playing with object deformations and even animations. Tip number two is connected to optimizing the speed of Blender viewport, which, if you've ever experienced working with a large scene, is notoriously slow. Fortunately, there are many tricks and tips to make it more responsive, and probably the fastest solution is to use this simplify option in the properties menu. You just activate it and nothing happens right off the bat, but immediately in this viewport menu, you can limit the number of subdivisions Blender displays, or the amount of hair children, or even the resolution of your volumetrics. These three culprits are usually responsible for a lot of slowdown and you can easily limit what you see in the viewport with these. Of course, you will not get the final rendering quality, but if viewport responsiveness is your goal, for example for animation, simplify menu is a real lifesaver. I talk about optimization of your scenes a lot in my environment course over at cgboost.com, so definitely try it out if you want to learn to better handle some really large scenes and also, if you want to learn how to make them. Carefully hidden in the graph editor, there is this set F-curve menu, which you can't really find in this menu down here. Instead, you need to select all your keyframes and hit Shift E. With this shortcut, you will get several commands to choose from. And the one I am using all the time is this make cyclic. It takes your data and it immediately adds a modifier here that makes it repeat the animation forever. I mean, if you really want to add it manually, you can do so in the shelf in this add modifier menu. But I find this shift E shortcut so convenient that I rarely ever do it this way. You can also quickly clear this cyclic function by going to the menu again and hitting this. Another great command in here is this linear interpolation. It basically makes your animation grow linearly based on the keyframes you've added. Okay, maybe not that useful in this case, but you can definitely use it if you want to grow your animation linearly over time. When it comes to tip number four, it is probable you already know this, but if you're tired of double clicking your objects or collections, which at least in my experience, sometimes gets very slow and unreliable in heavy scenes, you can simply hit F2 and immediately a rename dialog will appear, allowing you to rename objects, nodes and collections with ease. I seem to remember I was told that in Blender 3.0 and onward, you don't really have to worry about the tile size anymore, that it's all automated now. Well, from what I've learned, this is simply not true. For GPU renders, I in fact still recommend using larger resolutions here, like 2K, because graphic cards seem to be able to munch on larger tiles better. 
On the other hand, for CPU rendering, values like 512 pixels saved me enormous rendering times when I was finishing my short film. Now I'm sure someone in the comments will explain to me why this is, and I'll be eternally grateful. A useful tip number 6 that I've learned recently is simply this. Any object you select, you can hit Ctrl and Nump at 0 and immediately jump into the view of that object. Where I find it very useful indeed is when adding spotlight into my scene, especially those using some sort of gobos or light blockers. By the way, I really like to use this add-on called gobos, which features many sorts of these light occluders. Some of them even animated, which is awesome. If you're interested, definitely head over to Blender Market. I have actually added a discount code for this, so if you want to purchase, use it at the checkout. Finally, in tip number 7, I simply have to mention an option that doesn't seem to be as widely known as it should be. You know how it is. You have a large scene, you append stuff into it, and then choose to delete it. You add in some textures, but choose to use different ones. Uh, you create materials, but not use them afterwards. Now Blender has this functionality that the next time you fire up your scene, it deletes anything you don't actually use in it. However, it is not totally reliable and sometimes a lot of unused collections and other junk remains in your file taking up space and memory. In Blender, these unused data blocks are usually indicated by this little zero that tells you that it's used by zero objects. For the cleanup of my large Heroes of Bronze scenes, I used to try this file cleanup menu and then hit these options haphazardly. Well, for some reason, that did not produce reliable results either. And in the end, I got used to another option. You just go to Outliner, switch to this Orphan Data section, and here you can actually see all the data that is not used in your blend file. And up here you can actually see this option called Purge. Well, if you hit it repeatedly, you quite reliably get rid of anything that isn't used. And, I mean, how cool does Purge sound compared to Cleanup, right? And there you have it, my 7 new Blender tips that I wanted to share with you, especially since they served me well in the several months that I spent finishing Heroes of Bronze The Memory. By the way, I'm still continuing working on the project, and there may even be a new announcement soon concerning a possible future short film. So stay tuned. And if you want to keep supporting the project, you can definitely check out my Patreon, or you can have a look at my courses, which you can buy on Gumroad or cgboost.com. There's a lot of it, and you will find all the links in the description below. And that's it from me for today. I hope you found at least some of the tips useful. And until next time, stay creative, my friends. Martin out.